Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Happy Aloha Friday and welcome to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. We have been dealing with a lot of ickness in the world. So today's show is about promoting wellness. We need to replenish ourselves with good vibrations and amazing people. So every person, every social movement, and every community needs artists who inspire us and invite us to reconnect with love, uh, creative selves, healing, and dreams. Lucy Lynch's essence, creativity, voice, and musical arrangements are like sugar for our hearts and ears. And I'm so glad that she's here with us today. Welcome, darling. <laughs> oh, what an intro. Aloha. Oh, Welcome. Aloha. Well, thank yeah. you. Well, happy Aloha Friday. So, Lucy, give our viewers a little blurb about yourself. Where do you come from? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> where were you raised? <laughs> exactly. Sometimes that's really a good question. I ask myself that question, like, where did I come from? Do you right? feel like you're from Venus, Mars, you know? Like. So I actually recently, I have the feeling it's it's a mix between out and the stars, but I have the feeling I actually come from the whales, but that is a different uh, okay. story. Um, I would really say, you know, I am a singer and songwriter, uh -huh. I am a magic maker, and I'm a life lover. So I think that's kind of like, you know, three key words uh -huh. in my life. And I'm originally from Hamburg, Germany, as mm -hmm. you can maybe hear in my accent. I hardly, you know. Yeah, but you know, it's, but, you know, and that's so, so born and raised there. Born and, raised. and I lived there a long time, I mean, until I was 28. So, okay, yeah. so 28, you were in Hamburg, Germany, probably traveled a lot. Yes. What brought you to Hawaii? So it was, it started with a dream, or it started actually with a book I read about fairies and nature spirits. And that really got me in touch with really connecting with my Oh, soul spirit, and I just loved it so much. And then I had this dream where I flew around the head of the Statue of Liberty and it said to me, come home. And I was very confused because I didn't really have a relationship with the United States. Right. Uh, but I followed the dream, so I took my fairy costume with me and I flew <laughs> to New York City and I danced down Broadway in my fairy costume. I'm so sad because the social media world was not you know, that big then. Going bad, So yeah. I don't have any, don't have like, any Instagram picture. or anything. I still have, though, on a camera somewhere at my parents' house on like a tape, uh -huh. there must be still some uh, footage of that. Uh, but so how marvelous. That's how my love with uh, with America, America really started. started. Yeah. And how long ago was that? Uh, so that was probably nine nine, ten years ago. Nine, ten years ago. Yeah. Even and longer. Uh, it was two thousand five. Two thousand five. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah we got a few years there and uh, uh, so from Statue of Liberty in New York to Hawaii, how did that stretch happen for you and uh, how long you've been in Hawaii now? So it's, you know, it's always the, the, the story behind it would be a wonderful movie or a book. I just, I'm so alive right now that I just, uh, I always say I don't have the time right now to write that book because I'm still living it. So how it, all, how it started was the New York experience and then I was so carried by something in New York, like mm -hmm. some love and higher power and intuition and gut feeling that I decided, you know what, all these books that I've been reading about fairies, nature spirits, Paolo Coelho, follow your heart, follow the path, it will always unfold in front of you. I said, I have to, for myself, put it to practice. I have to almost prove to myself that that's really true. And so I booked another flight to New York City, and with a very low, teeny tiny budget, I decided to travel through the United States with bus, train, and hitchhiking, and then ending up in Hawaii. That was my goal. Wow. And, and did you, did I you did have, it. Did you have this plan to come straight to Oahu or an no, island No, I actually in landed on the Big Island. Big Island. Yeah, so it was, um, I traveled all the way with all the adventures that you can imagine with a snowstorm in Pittsburgh and a broken down train and sleeping on a, a train for uh, three days, being then in San Francisco, LA, San Diego, and you know, Yosemite, all the good stuff, the redwood right. trees, and it was just beautiful. And then I uh, took a, a plane to the Big Island, and I had no idea on the plane where I was gonna 
and that stay and end up. Nothing. You totally had this faith. And I just had faith. I met, I met a beautiful gentleman on the plane who was there with his niece. They, they took me in, you know, into their beautiful house on the big island. <laughs> just that was, like that. that just it's, like that. It's like Aloha Spirit taking yes. care of you and welcoming yes. you. So it's been what? Uh, seven, seven years. I'm years here now. now. But back then, um, I wish I could have just stayed. But you know the whole visa immigration. Uh -huh. So I, right. I had to go back to Europe, mm -hmm. keep working. I came back for half a year. And then I met my now beautiful husband, Matthew Lynch. So there was love story. There was a love story. The love story. Do you have a song for that love story? Oh, I actually have. Or several, probably. But play one for us. So yeah. a little bit. So this is one. actually really sweet. I haven't played it in a while, but it's it's very sweet. And this is a song. I. Uh, couch surfed on his couch. I found him uh -huh. on the internet on couchsurfing.org uh -huh. and I uh, booked a night on his couch and I arrived at his house and he had this guitar with only four strings and I sat down <laughs> and, I, and I sang, I sorry, sang this song. That is marvelous. You do need to write this story. <laughs> and the lyrics kind of freaked him out. He's always like, man, when you sang those lyrics, I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so here we go. What if I am a princess and you're the frog I kiss? What if I am just the one that you have always missed? On the plane and the train and the boat, really anywhere. And what if I am a witness of miracles' existence? What if I'm already close to you, but you still feel the distance? Mm, what if I am? What if, what if I am? What if I am here to free your mind now? What if I am the one that you have always missed? What if I am? Oh my goodness. <laughs> and you sang that for him? I sang that for him. And he's got Oh my goodness. Kind of without thinking about it. <laughs> And then he was like, yeah, yeah. wow, you, you can sing. And, but he, I could see he was a little intimidated by the whole idea. Yeah, well, you know, so it just kind of came to you, like, spontaneously, and it just did. Yeah, it was this thing. That yeah. it, it was a song that has been coming through a few days before on the, on the big island, and I was like, okay, I just got to share it with, you know, I got to share it with uh -huh. him. You know? <laughs> oh, my So that goodness. was that. So, wow, so, okay, so... Uh, when we started the program, we talked about your inquiry about wanting to find out if the, it was true, this world of love yes, and, and you know, all beings being worthy yes, and of, um, you know, magic, which yes. I think we so kind of lose touch with that. Mm. What are your findings? <laughs> so... From that such to where you're at now. <laughs> so it's very interesting. Back then, obviously, I was very much in touch with it. You know, like every breath, that I, every step, that journey. Uh, I, I life journaled it. So the book is kind of there. I just have to probably transcribe <laughs> that. But I, I, it was all these different people that I met, different connections that I made. It was literally as if somebody was there with me. OK, now go that way. Now go this way. How about you go that way? And the things were just unfolding so beautifully. Mm -hmm. And then, at some point, um, the world that we as a society have created came back in, which was, oh, you cannot just stay here. You need a visa. 
So that was already how the first roadblock arrived. Right. It's where like, oh yeah, the practical, uh, the practical aspects of reality, aspects of reality, yeah, of, reality yeah, of, yeah. of that, of that form kind of reality. reality. Yes. So I was like, okay, okay, and um, I. Because I got so, I fell so in love with Hawaii and what Hawaii g kind of tickled in me and got out of me that I was, I got, I got attached pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I think I got in my own way with like really trying to force it. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is in my own experience, these are only my findings, obviously, when I start forcing it and trying to put it in a box and make something happen, like because oh, I need it, I want it, and get so forceful, this kind of magic, I don't want to say disappears, but it kind of moves into the background. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if magic would be that fairy, it would be yeah. like, okay, you do that for a while. I'm not gone, but I'm still here, I'm watching you. I'm still here if you need me, but you need to let go, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And so I got very immersed in that kind of panic mode of how can I stay here, how can I be here? Mm -hmm. And but that seed was there. The seed. But you just had to figure out, okay, it's yeah. not gonna happen the way that I'm yes. trying to make it happen. So once you realize, okay, I have to take a step back, breathe, uh, yes. maybe this process has to happen more organically, how then did it go back to that place of that seed of say, okay, from conceptualization to reality, water, you know, it was really an active, you? I would say, an inspired action step of letting go. So what happened was that Matthew and I met and we really deeply connected, uh -huh. you know, not only through that song, but just in uh -huh. our hearts. Uh, but he had already uh, made a choice to leave the islands of Hawaii and mm -hmm. move to Australia. So he left and uh, there was no other way for me than going back to Europe at mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. And back in Europe, I really, I was living on an island over there and I was pretty secluded and I was working a lot. So that I was working as a tour guide, I was a singing tour guide over there. And the time that I have had off, I would go into nature and really go inward and really connect with that feeling, with that what I discovered in Hawaii. And then what came, the first thing that came was, if I cannot be happy where I am, if I cannot be content here, I will not be happy in Hawaii either. Mm -hmm. right. And I remember that very clearly. And it was mm -hmm. the same thing mm -hmm. with, if I cannot be in that love without Matt, if I cannot be in love without that man, mm -hmm. without having the feeling to need him, mm -hmm. I cannot, it, it, it will not be that true love. Right, and right. so I really had to let him go. And I mean, you know, looking back now, especially because the whole story has a happy ending, uh -huh. it's a wonderful story still to share. Still unfolding, yes. Uh, exactly, it's still unfolding. But, you know, that, that uh, it was very painful, and I cried a lot, uh -huh. and I, the letting go aspect. Yeah. But I'm very grateful I did. Yeah, and, you know, it's really amazing uh, what you just said about this fantasy and projection that I think the whole world makes about Hawaii. Yeah. That if you're here, you're going to be amazingly happy. Every and day. Every day, right, yeah, and, and every day you're gonna be seeing rainbows and rain and ocean and mountains and uh, it's the epiphany of paradise. But I think it's very true that we experience a lot of what we already have as a foundation. So if you come in with that, maybe you can tap into some of you know what's here, but it's also everywhere. Yeah. But if you're miserable and you come in here you expecting will also be miserable. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> and also there is the part of duality in life, you know, like I, I think we always seek only the good and we don't make spaces for also the hardships that you know, is about life too, the letting yeah. go, the, you know, you, you have one dream and then you have to, you know, adapt to that dream or you find a new dream as you're, you know, chasing, you know, your dream. And, uh, you know, that, that is really cool. We're gonna take a quick break yeah. and uh, be right back. <laughs> yeah. 
Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel, ThinkTech. ThinkTech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice, Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host, Beatrice Contelmo, and I'm here with uh, Lucy Litch. And uh, so, so here we are. And I was thinking on how do we re-engage in this amazing conversation <laughs> even after that. You just want to take a break, go to the beach and just, you know, reflect. I mean, there was a lot of things there to, you know, explore from our first segment of this episode. So do you mind playing a song for us about where you're at right now? Oh, okay. Like 2018, mm -hmm. Lucy okay. in Hawaii, as a woman, as a creator, as a inspirer, as a sister, as a wife. You know? mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
uh -huh. I get cry. <laughs> oh, it's like let go, be let go. Oh, so I you almost <laughs> cried this time because you asked me that question, and then I was just like, it is a song that kind of exists. See, I'm letting go of the tears and, and the yeah. smile and the sadness and the joy and the hope. You know, it's that all, all everything has a space for me. It's yeah, always yeah. like you know, without like there is sadness. Why do we only chase the happiness? Because Without sadness, happiness would would be would not even be there because then we we are it's just judgments that we make, right? Mm -hmm. And it would be so blah. Yeah. Because uh, you know, there's a lot to be said about um, that place of grief. We all have losses mm. and disappointments and. Uh, you know, kind of fall on our faces. And, but yeah. that's part of learning, that's part of growing, that's proper attachment. You and know, that's like also if that's, we suffer, it's because being alive. alive. It's right. being I, alive. Yes. yes. Like, I think um, we forget that yeah. all of that is is life and that we, we yeah, it's just that that's, oh my God, you know, even the yeah. tears and the pain, like, yeah. You're here, you're in this body, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, How absolutely. wonderful. And uh, yeah, so this is really amazing. So um, I want to talk to you about a amazing play I've seen you mm. in uh, earlier this year called uh, um, Money Talks. Money Talks, but what the hell does that mean? Yeah. So let our viewers know about uh, how that play came to fruition and if you have any plans to uh, have it back in the community we will yeah. and what marsha and i marsha zina major my co-writer and uh -huh. co-performer and sweetheart soul sister uh -huh. what we recently have we have taken on a whole new um journey because we've really realized this play is about self-worth it is about you know viewing success and failure and money all in a, in a new light and specifically motivating people and women to look at their finances to no longer be afraid to step into their financial power mm -hmm. and what we created now is actually we uh, partnered with the arts at Mark's garage and we are just so excited about it place. with the nonprofit organization here locally we partnered with them for a weekend which we call what's my worth celebrating our inherent value and it's going to be a weekend where we have two performances of our two-woman musical show but also on the Sunday we're going to add a free community panel workshop e event which is going to be interactive we will have four women leaders with with their own money and success stories and then some surprises some exercises that we throw in to really have people experience some of that you know to look at their own self-worth at their own self-love right. and their own value well it, it's very nice you're touching this and that because uh, a lot of people who live the dream and to think about the dream they don't uh, recognize money as a big uh, tool yes. in part to uh, open many doors and also the lack thereof uh, that can shatter so many opportunities uh, especially for women because yes. uh, we're always underpaid no matter where you are in the exactly. world unless Iceland I think Iceland is the only place that women, you know, kind of like get equal power there with finances, but then who wants to live in Iceland for six <laughs> months? Uh, uh, maybe, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, but why can't we not have Iceland model, you know, all over the world for women? Uh, but, you know, so, so the part of money, and uh, I wanted to tap in, um, why was that a call? Cool one of the core aspects of this play and and how is that manifested also in terms of worth because we live in a society of haves and have notes yes and how do we bridge that and and people also treat it you know like very much on how much money you have it shouldn't have to be this way, yeah. but so I want to tap in into your artistic and your woman empowered, you know, creator to get that sense for me. It really came out of, uh, you know, it was very simple that Marsha and I met and we realized we are both um, underpaid, 
and kind of broke artists, and excuse my language, but we were really screwed up about money, you know? Each one of us in our own way. And so we... What was it? Did you mind sharing? Like, what uh, was it? So for me, <laughs> I was kind of always in that magic world. I was always magically taken care of, but I never really was eager to learn about money. How do I invest money? Mm -hmm. How do I... And I was always living on the edge, you know? It was just always enough, right. just enough. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and for Marsha, they, her and her husband, they never really planned for their retirement or for the future. They were right. also people of the moment, mm -hmm. you know, always living with what they had. And uh, we decided to look at that because we realized this whole starving artist, the myth of the starving artist. Maybe we can do something yeah. about it. And then we pretended to have a million dollar budget and we wrote a Broadway <laughs> musical about money musical. and humanity. And then we wrote this two woman play and while in the process we realized oh my god we are all thinking that you know that that our the, the amount of money in our bank account is connected to our worth to our mm -hmm. value mm -hmm. and so many people feel very bad about themselves or feel small because mm -hmm. they don't have that and a lot of that is in women mm -hmm. and then we thought but look how can we reclaim that right how is there a way how can we step in the feminine way into that financial power and excitement because like you said right. money is a tool we can move mountains with money in the world right. that we have created right now so can we own it can we say hey i don't have to be uh poor i don't have to you know walk walk barefoot through the streets to spread love mm -hmm. like i can also invite money into my life to help me to do even more of that Right, right, and uh, you know there's so much value in uh, um, that is immeasurable. That's beyond the what money can mm. pay for artists, for people yes. who do like you know profit world. Uh, you know work the movers and shakers. You know we needed to really support uh, uh, those who also support uh, this. You know, foundation that we have that's so cracked. Yes. And uh, you know, so I'm really happy that you uh, uh, brought this, you know, uh, into your walk. You know, starting this year, and then will there be uh, when? When will the uh, the weekend play and the workshop? So this be will be on the nineteenth, nineteenth, twentieth, and twenty-first of October, Friday and Saturday night. We have the show, and then Sunday the free event. And then I have some other really exciting news to share. So Marsha and I have now our first booking on the mainland in Colorado. So next June, we're going to bring Money Talks to Colorado, to the mainland. We're going to travel through the states, stop in different cities, and we are planning on having our mini run on Broadway. And then we're also going to bring it to Hamburg, Germany. So we are looking at a very big year, very big time ahead. Uh -huh. We're very excited. We're in the process of searching, looking for sponsorship. And the, the feedback we've been getting has been just so amazing of people yeah. who are really excited. They want to support us. Uh, they want to. This is also a very beautiful investment uh, for some yeah, people, absolutely. you know, to jump on board and to get to get on this. We call it the money talks train, and right. it's 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 a train, man. That train is going, and uh, we right. don't know where the destination is. But, but we're on it. Yeah. So we have less than a minute okay. left. Okay. Oh my God. Would you like to uh, gift our viewers with one song from this amazing Broadway of Money Talks? Okay, very good. Oh, quickly, quickly. Oh my goodness. And go support Lucy and Marsha and uh, check them out. <laughs> What's my worth? What's my worth? Am I governed at birth? What's my Without the fancy name, is there anyone on this whole damn earth who can tell? 
Well, how can I tap this so perfect ending? Until next week or until next time, we hope with a lot of work.